My name's Jim Ellum and I work in Staffordshire. Um, and I've been part of the working group working with the fire services on, and the university on this strategy. Um, my role is working with assistive technology. I'm a social worker by background, so I haven't got a technical background, but I've certainly had a long experience and interest in working with people living in the community, people with dementia and their carers. Assistive technology is a very broad um, area to talk about, and we can talk around computers, access controls for people with profound disabilities. But really, I like to think of it in these ways, about anything designed to make life easy for people. And that's people with a long-term condition, or disability, or dementia. Or for those people supporting them with an informal carer, their families, or those people working with them, and the system working with them. And one of the things we brought today, Staff and Rural Homes, our local telecare provider, brought a stall with some technology on to let you have a look at. And it's a very wide range of things, working for things from a pound from Poundland, up to things costing, you know, hundreds of pounds. But at the end of the day, if it's got to be trusted by the person, it's got to be reliable, it's got to work for them, it's got to deliver. So as long as it's effective, and it does the trick, I think we should consider anything that can aid that process to be technology. We talked this morning as, as well about making things personal. There's a different world of working. We're not talking about lumping people together. So everybody with dementia has got exactly the same journey and life experience. We're all individuals. And therefore, we'll have different outcomes we want to achieve. There's different pressures we'll face. And if we think about the journey with dementia, it is a journey. And there might be small, um, worrying signs at the beginning. And there could be quite complex issues to uh, work with and support and care for at the end of someone's journey with dementia. At each step of the way, we have to find the right ways of supporting that person. Technology is not the only answer. There's a whole range of things that it's part of the solution. And where it can work well, it works right for that individual. So I'm a great believer in actually thinking about the individual first, the outcomes they want to achieve, and then how we can use a range of services, including technology, to achieve those outcomes. This is something that carers have said to me a number of times. If five years ago I'd known what I know now, then life would have been so much better for us all. We would not have worried as much or struggled for as long and would have lived our lives differently. By the time I knew what could have helped, it was too late for us. I want other people to get the right help and advice at the right time. And that seemed to be a theme from this morning about how do we know what's available, what services are the pathways to get into. So the work the fire service are doing is instrumental in actually getting to people's homes earlier, maybe ahead of some of the mainstream services, working in conjunction with the other community groups, the faith groups, the, uh, the local communities, about trying to help people understand what's out there, how they can access it and make best use of it, what's right at the right time. One of the things that we've been doing in Staffordshire, and I'm sure it's mirrored across the West Midlands and in Kent and around the country, we're trying to make technology more accessible. And one of the difficulties is it's not one of those words that trips off the tongue. It doesn't trip off my tongue that easily. But assistive technology is quite a, it's not a very meaningful sentence. So at Billbrook at Home, in partnership, the County Council, Health, Fire, Police, Carers Association, we've equipped four rooms in a very busy setting with equipment of all types to help people in the kitchen, bathroom, bedroom and lounge. It can cover things like hearing, it can cover things like dexterity, it can things like mobility. It also focuses, importantly, around dementia. And in the same building, we've got memory clinic. So people with an early diagnosis see a dementia navigator who can support them in their journey. And at the right time, they can come and look at Billbrook and they can revisit Billbrook to see what things could help prompt memory, help with medication, support a worried carer who lives 20 miles away to understand what's happening at home when they're not with mum and dad. A lot of us will be carers, and we are affected by dementia. And we can be very worried and anxious about what the uh, dementia is actually doing when you're not with someone. And we use the term worried and guilty. A lot of us, you know, wags, footballers, wives and girlfriends. But a lot of us are wags as well, because we're worried about family members living around the country. Our communities are much more dispersed than they used to be. My family live 120 miles away in Cambridge. If anything happens to mum and dad, I'm, I'm a two-hour journey away, it's a very different thing to being down the road where I can just pop, pop in every night after work. Those are big themes, and especially with dementia, how can we support people in the absence of mainstream services or, or along the journey? We do training there. The fire service are frequent visitors. 
Chris Dowding, who's there, he's one of the guides there. He's one of the instrumental people in South Staff showing it. My colleagues in Stoke are opening a centre very shortly in a similar way. We've got a shop there so people can see technology, try it, feel it. If they like it, they can either take it away if they're eligible, as assessed for, or if they're low-cost items, they can buy them at cost and take them home and get on with their lives. We've also got a lot of community work going about trying to spread the word about technology and how we can help support people with dementia. And in Staffordshire, Steve Pope, many years ago, with a colleague in social care, established the Olive Branch, which is about trying to make fire safety everybody's business. But being in Staffordshire, they just don't think about fire safety, they think about all the other aspects, welfare checks, health through warmth, home improvement, medication. And now there's Let's Work Together, where well, agencies are working together, so everybody's got a responsibility sharing that. So many people are working together in a partnership. And it's certainly worth looking at Olive Branch and, and Let's Work Together on the web when, you've, when, we, when we leave here. And we're trying to show that technology can be very simple. So in the early days of, 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 of life, you might have more problems with your uh, physical ability than your memory. And the frustration of trying to open that jam jar or get off the sofa or reach the things from a high shelf without risk of falling could be more a risk factor for you than the you're forgetting your keys when you go out the front door. So we've been introducing what we call the box of tricks to community groups, which are low-level solutions that are available in the high street. And now many community groups are running this themselves. They're being aware that technology hasn't got to be complicated or sophisticated. But within these boxes, we talk about medication compliance. We talk about memory issues, and we try to encourage people to think, if things are worrying you, there might well be a solution out there. Talk to your pharmacy, talk to your health professionals. But also, there could be simple things you can do yourself. It's that self-care, which we're, as a community now, I think, talking about much more than a few years ago. We're very fortunate, as well, as having a, a very thriving group of Alzheimer's cafes, approach cafes, and monthly Alzheimer's support evenings. These are run in conjunction with the third sector. Some are funded, some are purely self-funded by the community. And Anne and Peter are a couple who are happy for me to share their story. Peter's got a vascular dementia, a really talented carpenter who built his own home. When I got to know them three years ago, he didn't realise he built where they lived. It was a very lovely home, he was very proud of it. But he'd forgotten he'd actually built every door, every window by hand. And his carer, his wife of over 60 years now, was starting to struggle because Peter kept leaving the taps on and flooding. And for a very house-proud couple, floods and offer damage. And they wanted something simple, non-invasive. They're a very private couple. They didn't want to be involved with health and social care because they're a married couple, codependent, support each other. And we found them this magic plug, a very simple device that goes in the sink, and when the water leaks a certain level, it lets the water go down the plug hole, preventing floods. It costs three pounds. And as a county, we make them available to people free of charge through our cafes. Anne went away, did the trick. Because it worked for her, and she still got her independence, she came back to the cafe, and a few weeks later, a few months later, she said, I'm starting to struggle now because I, I can't go to the shops any longer, I can't go for a swim, I can't get my hair cut, because Peter will come looking for me. He forgets I've gone. I left a note, but he won't read it. So we introduced a memo minder by the front door. Simple uh, voice recording, and puts on, saying, Peter, I've gone to the shops, I'm back in half an hour, please wait in for the postman. And when Peter walked out of the lounge into the hallway, he heard his wife's voice saying that message. And he went and sat down again. Probably five minutes later, he got up again, looked for his wife, heard the message and sat down again. She said it was great because her voice never lost its tone of enthusiasm by repeating the same message. <laughs> Peter loved it because after 60 years of marriage, what his wife said went. And he didn't argue with her. <laughs> so he went and sat down. It cost 10 quid. You know, it's not a high-cost solution. Anne went on to Radio Stoke and talked about it. Next day, 300 phone calls. But if I went to the radio, we might get two. But Anne knows what she's talking about. She's a carer. She's living it. So through the Care of the Association, people can talk about technology. And there's Jim showing Debbie, the last coordinator, something called a locator. Jim's wife has got dementia, and she wandered off when they were shopping. He lost her. He panicked. They stopped going shopping together. Being cooped up at home, their life went down. Their well-being dropped. The risk of that family breaking down was very high. Maplin sell these, a simple device, a handheld device that Jim would carry, a little pendant that his wife would carry, now Peter wears. If Peter goes out of range, 10 or 12 feet away, Anne's alerted. If you lose him in the crowd, a bit like a metal detector, she can scan and she can find him. Because of this, they went on holiday again. 
They went to Blackpool ballroom dancing. And with confidence, you got a life back. Total cost of solutions, under 150 quid. At what price can you put on that? Two years later, Anne was still caring for Peter at home. So technology can, at the start of someone's journey, these simple solutions and that peer support about explaining what they can do and how they can work are very effective. We were fortunate in having joint funding from the PCT, as they were, in actually putting these low-level solutions out in one of our districts. Because it works so well, and the, the members, our, our county councillors got involved and supported it, we have to share this across the county. And they've been very supportive around the box of tricks and prevention. And now we're trying to engage with our other partners to say, a bit like the fire service have been doing, let's all work together. A little bit of money in prevention can make big savings up line, and we're changing the culture of stuff. But of course, technology is not for everybody. We can be in danger of saying, because someone's wandering, we should tag them. We should put something on them so we know where they are. And we've got to think about civil liberties and rights and choice. But if we can explain that, in fact, we don't want to stop you going anywhere, but we know where you are if you need help, and we can come to you immediately, it's a very different ethos. So we need to think about the ethical considerations of any technology. It's not about replacing human contact, but we've spoken this morning about how tight resources are. And can we stretch them that bit further for, 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 for paid services, for informal carers, by using technology to actually augment what we do and make those resources and those human skills go a bit further. And people can feel very isolated. Rock, I think, spoke about his mum not initiating things. And Jane struggled to remember telephone numbers. She had to wait for carers to come in to ring people until she got a phone with picture buttons on. And now when she rings the daughter, she pushes a photo of her daughter and it rings the number automatically. She can now make contact with people. These are 30, 40 pounds, not a high cost. But the cost now is to Jane that she can now make her contact. And her daughter feels that mum's ringing her to have a chat rather than having to initiate the call the whole time. Again, early stages of dementia, introducing these types of things will have a much last, more lasting effect than introducing somebody when they come towards the final stages. It's about lear you know, learning and adoption. Medication. I mean, how many people have we gone into as individuals or family members who come out of hospital with tablets everywhere? You've got tablets before you go into hospital. You come home from hospital with new medication. And what we've been able to look at is ways of supporting people with a range of technology, from not in, not in your handkerchief, to a sign on the door, to pill dispensers that you can um, put them in for the week ahead. We've got phone reminder systems now we can use for two pounds a week. You can get four phone calls a day saying, Jim, take your tablets. Far cheaper than paying someone to come in four times a day for half an hour a day to prompt me to take my tablets. A half hour call for medication only prompt, and most agencies now wanting half hour calls, will cost about two and a half thousand pounds a year. Now, if I'm paying for care, as many of us will be in the future, because we're probably going to have occupational pensions or we're of a generation where we've got properties and things and a bit of savings, that's an awful lot of our money spent just in case what if. If we can start to use some of those resources to actually buy these things earlier, we can keep those resources for things important, like going out for a meal with friends or paying for a cab to get us somewhere and get us back safely. And with the pill dispenser, we've been very, very fortunate. This is a device which has been around for a long time, but generally misunderstood. And there were issues about who would fill it, who would maintain it, who would support it. And engaging with our local pharmacy committees in Staffordshire has been really rewarding. We've got now 70 or 80 community pharmacies willing to support this who will fill it for people for the month ahead or the week ahead, deliver it, get it back, return it. And at the right time and the right day, the thing bleeps and buzzes, the medication comes into a window, and you tip it into your hand. Initially, we thought, great, people with early dementia help them take their tablets. We've also found a lot of our carers, as you'll know only too well, are neglecting their own long-term conditions to support the person they care for. So many of our long-term condition carers are using this themselves to make sure their heart tablets and other medication is being done alongside the burden of caring. A pill dispenser is under £100. Very cost-effective. And we've now got CCG funding in North Staffordshire and Stafford to 50-50 fund it with social care. I'm not going to dwell on savings because it's not the day for that, but every pound we've put into the pill dispenser, we're saving about £9 to health and social care. It's roughly 50-50. So if I was a betting man, putting a pound on getting nine pound back, it'd be a no-brainer, wouldn't it? So let's engage with our health colleagues about saying let's work together, invest together, save together. What Peter's been talking about this morning, you know, prevention's far cheaper than cure or the outcomes. 
And the other thing around dementia, and this is something that's struck me over many years in social work, is that we, we often got very poor information about what people can and can't do for themselves. I mean, the Paralymp Paralympics have struck me about we've been actually focusing on people's ability rather than disability. And dementia is a very long journey. And for many of us, we're labelled by what people think about us and say about us without realising the fact behind it. And the Just Checking system, which we've been using in Staffordshire now for about six or seven years, and it's been adopted around the country in greater and greater numbers, is a very discreet system that you can fit in someone's home with permission. And it monitors them 24 hours, seven days a week. It doesn't capture sound. It doesn't capture pictures. What you get is a barcode. And as I walk around my property, it gives a barcode. And if you know that person, if you're a family member, family care or professional, you can start to understand, does mum sleep through the night? Does she get up? What happens? If she goes out for the day or at night time, is it a risk? Or is it something about mum's actually maintaining her functions? And this was a chart of a woman who was in hospital. And on the hospital ward, she didn't move from her bedside, didn't need anything. And the hospital team said, long-term care. We, she went home for a day. She went home for a weekend. We showed the hospital team this. It's changed their perception of dementia. We use it in sheltered housing. And some of the scheme managers who before were quite antagonistic around dementia have now got a greater understanding through the systems like this and the training around dementia with our CPNs. But it has helped many people to actually stay at home longer where they want to be and delayed families' feelings of guilt and worry about what happens when they're not with someone. It's very important having that quality information. So assistive technology can be practical support. It can be an assessment tool. And of course, community alarms and telecare. You're all aware of pull cords and pendants, these beige boxes in people's homes. A wonderful service. It links people remotely by buttons they can push, or sensors, as you'll see outside, that will work on my behalf. If I fall to the ground and I'm unconscious, the false detector will know I'm in the wrong position and will summon help for me automatically. If I don't tip my pill dispenser, and it's telecare enabled, within a half hour slot, my call centre will get a prompt and they can maybe remind me to do something. But all those times I'm doing it independently, no one's worried because they know it's in the background, it's working for me. And we can do fire and flood and the other things that we've been doing. And of course, working with the fire service across Staffordshire, and I'm sure it's working in all the other um, parts of the country, we are fitting sensory equipment for people with hearing loss, people who are blind, for people with fire. Remotely monitoring means if help's required, you can call it externally. What's exciting though, and this is the new product, People are recognising a lot of us don't really want to have these great big beige boxes that come out of a hospital in our home. So the new range are just emerging, looking like little radios, which could be wall-mounted, very discreet. So some of the barriers to disability and the badge of shame of having a pendant, they're trying to find ways of colour coordinating to make it much more acceptable. Again, encouraging early adoption. And for relatively low cost, these systems tend to cost people two or three pounds a week, rising on the amount of equipment with them. It's a very effective way of staying at home and providing support for longer. And I've got a few examples of how it can help. Here's Barbara. Short-term memories, leaving things cooking, the problems. Telecare equipment was fitted, which if in the event of a fire happening or, or smoke developing, the community care contact centre were alerted. They could instruct her over the intercom to vacate the property. But it's a way of managing the risk. And of course, it's a way of assessing the risk. Because if she started having fires day in, day out, had her dementia moved on a notch? Were there different things to be looking for? So community car alarm centres are not only monitoring and support, but an ongoing assessment of activity and how we can support people. And here's a couple living alone who live in Newcastle in Staffordshire. Devoted couple, married, I think, 55 years. Husband sleeps like a log and his wife's up to the bathroom about 12 times at night. But she's got dementia, and occasionally she wouldn't find a way back to bed, and occasionally she'd fall, but because he sleeps so heavily, he'd wake up in the morning, where's my wife, and she'd be on the floor somewhere. He was distraught, and it was starting to affect their ability of staying at home, his ability to feel he was a good carer. So we fitted a bed exit strip, so when his wife got out of bed, it talked to a little plug in the bedside lamp, and it turned the lamp lights on. So the way from her bed to the bathroom was lit, and because of her change in her perception, they took the door off and put folding doors on. So at night, she could see the lavatory right in front of her. And they also fitted grab rails everywhere. So where she was likely to fall or, or trip, there were things to hang on to. Now, a year later, they're still at home. She's not falling as often. If she's not back in bed in 10 minutes, the buzzer under his pillow 
will say your wife's not back in bed. So he's feeling confident. But the solution cost about £200. But crisis in terms of their independence and their confidence. And Joyce, living in South Staffordshire, lives in, between a busy road and a cul-de-sac and a canal. So two big hazards. And she goes wandering at times. She hasn't got family locally. And I think we've, we've spoken about communities and how communities support people often if families aren't available. And she's got a great neighbour, there's a great community, but people are saying, we need to know, if Joyce is out of her property, what happens? So, so exit sensors have been fitted. So if she goes out of her property, neighbours on a rotor are contacted to be alerted, and they can respond, and they can just help guide Joyce back from the road on occasion, back to the canal. It is monitoring, it's supporting the neighbours, who want Joyce to stay, they love her as a neighbour. She's been part of their life for a long time, they don't want to see her in care. Again, a simple way of which telecare can enable people on their journey and support the carer. And this is a very local company, a, a, a couple, who, a couple who wanted to stay at home, um, but were, were anxious about the, um, the risk of dementia. And about how can we learn, teach people new, new, new uh, skills and abilities, perhaps in the dementia pathway. So Staff and Rural Home work really closely with the family, with the care professionals. And what they did, they reminded the family, uh, the, the couple living there, to push the button. And back in 2005, this couple were given the support to stay at home, hopefully for two years, with the technology. If anything happened, they will push the button or telecare with, with someone help. What is fascinating is they're still there now. So what was thought of five, you know, uh, eight years ago, seven years ago, is now working in this day and age. That couple are still at home, still independent, their families are feeling happy, they're happy where they need to be. It's using telecare creatively. But we have got limitations about stuff inside the home. So say for walking. Doug's got dementia, lives with his wife, they've moved to a new property, and he misses being outside, out and about. They're using GPS technology now to allow him to go for walks. He's got a phone with him. The phone's got GPS built into it. If he goes missing, his wife can dial it up and see where he is. It allows her to see where he is, to say where she'd be concerned and he's concerned if he wanders off too far from home. It will alert if he goes out of a certain area. And if he's gone a long way away, you can actually track where people have gone to. He's still at home. Their relationship's far better. They've got something to talk about. He's in the community still doing things. And we've also got uh, issues now coming up in institutional care. And we've touched on hospitals, long-term care, people with very high needs. Most of them rarely use technology. It's traditional care, which is very expensive and quite invasive. So we have got some systems, and Peter Ball's here today from Stoke, and we're, we're working with care homes and hospitals, introducing technology to help people stay more independent enabling care staff to use the same technology you can use in the community to manage people with complex needs within care environments. It's reducing falls, admissions to hospital, empowering people, and it's saving money. And if you're a self-funder paying for care, your bills could be very high. So it's a way of actually making better value for people and reassuring those of us in the community that mum and dad are getting the right care and the right support in the care home. Derek's going to be talking about apps, and there's a whole range of new technologies coming out I'm not going to dwell on, but robotics and things are starting to be talked about. They're a long way off. So at the moment, we have to think pragmatically. But we have to have an eye open for the new products coming along that will help us all. O2 are bringing products out at Christmas, which we sold from Sainsbury supermarkets, which will do GPS tracking and care at home. Peter mentioned about uh, hob safety earlier. This, I saw this a couple of days ago. It plugs in behind the cooker, it goes in the wall, you set a button, and the predetermined amount of time the hob will work. After a certain amount of time, the red light flashes, it turns itself off. £240 coming out next June. One of the questions is, who will pay for it? Will the fire service pay for it just in case? Will social care pay for it? Or will the person pay for it? Or the landlord pay for it? These are questions we haven't quite worked out yet. Just to conclude, one of the things is about where do you get advice and information? One of the best websites is this website called AT Dementia. It focuses on dementia, it focuses on technology, and it's got a self-assessment function to guide you towards likely solutions. You've also got user and carer guides. It talks about ethics and assessments. 
There's some very good reports coming out recently. AT is a means of supporting people with dementia review. The slides are going to go out after today, so all the links are in there. And more recently, one I've come across, which is actually a user carer guide about what works and where to use it. And these are people's real ex examples, much as Alan and Peter and other people I've spoken about, what works for them. So it's not about the technology, it's about the outcomes you want to achieve and proportionality. It hasn't got to be complicated. The earlier you use it, the better it is. It can make life simpler and less stressful for you and people around you. It can save time and money for us all. And it can help us lead the life we choose where you choose. The final message, a bit like the Dementia Pledge, is about I personally want to get the right advice at the right time about making the right decisions. And if we can all sign up to the pledge and support the work the fire service and other agencies are, are leading on, we should be help more people get that advice and make sure they're making the right decisions at the right time and not looking back with regret saying, if I knew what I knew five years ago, life would have been different. Thank you.